Hey, Will here from machinelovest.com. So this is another video in the Casper application playlist. Uh, in the prior video, what we did was we launched the app to, um, to the web using Heroku. I've updated a bit here. I've just gone in and changed some of the assets that we're using, some of the wording. And I've done that in, uh, in the view, in Vue.js. I'm not going to talk about Vue.js or what I did to change the layout here in this video. What I am going to talk about is working with SQL Alchemy and going through and building out more of the routes for and the endpoints for our uh, REST Plus API. Here what I have is get, a get of all the users, get of a unique user ID, post, put, delete, which I haven't built out yet, uh, but I wanted to show how you could use, how you would connect your Flask application, Flask REST Plus application to these endpoints so that you can in this uh, Swagger uh, nice documentation that you get at the end of your API, how you could use that to try out and return data from your database. So stick around, like, and subscribe as always, and let's get into it. Okay, so just to recap, what we have here is our application, Casper Writing. Uh, I'm at the top level of it. I am in my PIP environment, um, P-I-P-E-E-N-V. And what I'm going to do to run this is just Python run. To run the application, what I could do uh, from Vue.js is do yarn serve. So this is now up at this location on, um, on the API side. This yarn serve is going to run and build and launch for me um, the site locally as I'd see it. And then when I push this up to Heroku, what it is actually live on Heroku. But I can visit that Swagger documentation. If I go to the Python endpoint um, forward slash API, what I have is available endpoints for Casper writing application here. And uh, all of these uh, these endpoints that I just showed you. All right, let me switch back to my IPython notebook here. And so I wanted to go over the application structure because it might be a bit confusing now. If you recall from the prior video, I used a Flask View JS template to get this thing launched on Heroku, and that worked beautifully. But since that time, I've changed the application structure. Now at the top layer under Casper Writing, there's the app, which with the init that creates the app, uh, the API, which is defining the API, the database, creating the DB. A lot of this is just moved around from that initial template. But I do have these models, namespaces, and schemas subdirectories which are each responsible for a different aspect of the app. My proc file is also different than what it was in the prior videos. The proc file preloads using gunicorn and then it uh, references the app and within the app there's an init that creates the app and so it's referencing app. Okay, all of that aside, once you have your database configured, your SQL Alchemy database configured, how do you start using it? So from app, import app. So this init has taken care of, if I go to the code base here, and under app, the init file has created, uh, created the app. Now, at its core, it's still just app equals flask pointing at the static folder where it's going to get the HTML and JavaScript. But now it's also configured and it also has the database initialized. The database, when I say from app.database import db, 
database is just database.py and it's really just uh, from flask SQL alchemy import SQL alchemy and then db equals SQL alchemy okay so let me just restart and clear output here and just walk through it with you okay so from app import app from app.database import db so from app.models users import users so this is the table that's going to be the representation in the uh, SQL Alchemy database for now it's just a users table with ID name email and password nothing very fancy there so now we have to use this in inside of an app context that's why we imported app what I'm going to do is create all of the tables in the database right now it's just that uh, database table and I'm going to create some users from that user model Jane and John um, just give them a name email password and then with the app context what I can do is add them to the session and then commit them to the database and this errors out for me because I've already committed them to the database and I don't I have a unique constraint on the email so I'm not gonna have users with the same email multiple users with the same email so instead of uh, Jane I'll do something like Joni Joni instead of John Jim So these are new users going into this database. Okay, and I have Joni and Jim who are new users. And I am going to add them, commit them to the database. So what what are we why are we doing this? Why aren't we just working on the application ourselves? So we are just figuring out how we're using SQL Alchemy. But also, this kind of code will be instrumental in populating our endpoints in the future. So on namespaces, when we have the users, specifically the user's detail resource. So this is for individual users. When I want to do a put and actually add them to the database, I'm going to need this kind of code to commit them to uh, the SQL, SQL database. So Jim and Joni should now be inside the database. So why don't we find them? And I think it was Joni at Jane.com. So still, all of this has to be done within the app context. Unfortunately, so Joni at Jane.com, and so I get this SQL Alchemy instance state, um, and then I get the Joni at Jane.com, and I get I get the user and the user ID. So it's interesting that user query filter byte, and then the first will when you return it as a dict give you this. If you just return, if we just print Jane it gives us user 3 and with Jane what you could do is do jane.name jane. Dot, why don't I make this less confusing I'm going to with within the app context what I'm doing is querying for a user do this from scratch here I don't want to get too far ahead so I'm looking for a user, okay? So my user is going to be user query filter by, which will give us a nice little uh, way that we can say we want this person with the, we want the person with this email and give us the first result. Now, if we print that user, we get user three, but we can find out their name and user dot email. So Joni, um, Joni and Jane.com. We can also 
go through in using this query get everybody right so you can just say everybody user query all and then for person and everybody let's see everybody's name Jane John Johnny and Jim and this is on our users endpoint if we want to get a list of users this becomes all users users query dot all and then what I do is I dump out a dictionary representation uh, using JSON dumps to return them from that get endpoint. And so actually, now that we've updated our database, if I refresh the Swagger documentation and hit this endpoint, because I've added two more people when I execute this, I'll have more individuals coming back from that list. More individuals coming back from that table. Okay, so this is how we play around with uh, grabbing our table in uh, in an IPython notebook, just so we can test things out um, and sort of make mistakes without having to commit code here to the routes and not knowing exactly what's going to happen. So this is a way uh, for you to to test drive SQL Alchemy the kinds of things that you can add to your endpoints to return data back to them. So I'm going to continue building out more, more of these endpoints. And um, in a future video, we are, we are making progress, but we're moving a bit slow. And what I want to get to is model building and deploying that. So um, look out for those videos. Please like and subscribe, guys. If there are other things you want to see with Flask, working with SQL Alchemy on Heroku. Let me know and look out for the next videos.